Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So Ant-Man is going to premiere on July 17th, so I thought it'd be fun to do a Hank Pym video just because the movies are making some changes and a lot of people are confused because Hank Pym's backstory in the comics is way different. I'm gonna have to explain a little bit from Age of Ultron, so careful for spoilers if you haven't seen that movie yet. In the comics, Hank Pym created Ultron. In the movies, it's Tony Stark. The reason why the movies didn't go with the Hank Pym backstory is because Marvel wasn't ready to do an Ant-Man movie, but they were ready to do Ultron. So they were just working with what they already had. That's why in the Ant-Man movie, we're going to meet an old version of Hank Pym that'll be passing the torch to the Scott Lang version of the character. There have been three people to use the name Ant-Man. First was Hank Pym, then Scott Lang, and then Eric O'Grady. I'm not a huge fan of the Eric O'Grady Ant-Man. I think the movie is just going to deal with Hank Pym and Scott Lang. I don't think we're going to see Eric in the movie at all. But because they aged Hank Pym up, they're also doing Hope Van Dyne, his daughter, instead of Janet Van Dyne. Her, her story in the comics is a little bit different too, but this is mostly a Hank Pym video. Hank Pym is most famous in the comics for being Ant-Man and for creating Ultron. So let's just do like a quick comic book history. The character debuted for the first time in Tales to Astonish number 27. That was in 1962, but he was only called Hank Pym. It wasn't until a little while later in Tales to Astonish number 35 that he started calling himself Ant-Man. When he first started out, he was just like a normal biochemist married to a woman named Maria Travaya. She was a foreign national from Hungary living in the country. When they traveled to her homeland, they were captured by secret police. They murdered her, and that became Hank Pym's big call to action. The Soviets became a big antagonist in the comics for Stan Lee, you know, just because we're in the middle of the Cold War. This is the 1960s. Because it was Stan Lee that created the character, he had this typical heroic call to action where he's like, I'm going to right all the wrongs and justices of the world. You know, you can see Stan Lee shaking his fist, speaking in Stan Lee voice. Eventually, he discovered subatomic particles that he started calling Pym particles. He used those to create two different serums, one for shrinking down and one for getting bigger. So he tried it out and it ended up being a disaster. He got trapped in an anthill, barely escaped, said F this shit and trashed his prototype formula. Cut to a week later, he decides to try again, but this time he tries to communicate with the ants using a cybernetic helm. He also made himself his first suit to protect him whenever he shrunk down. He ended up getting captured by Soviets. They forced him to create a weaponized gas, but he escaped using his Ant-Man gear and used the ants at a nearby anthill to take the Soviets out. Thereafter in the comics, you know, he went on to battle a laundry list of villains as Ant-Man. Later, in Tales number 44, Janet Van Dyne appeared for the first time. Her father was Hank Pym's partner. He got killed by an alien. Pym revealed the secret of Ant-Man to Janet, who wanted to avenge her father's death. He taught her to use the Pym particles, which at this point had been turned into a gas. And he used his knowledge of biochemistry to give her the ability to grow wings that will let her fly. So that's when she became the Wasp. They fell in love and started fighting crime as a team. Cut to, like, a few issues after that, in Tales number 49, he became Giant Man. As you can imagine, that's when he started growing up really big instead of shrinking down. It was just a refinement of his Pym particles. He turned them into pills that allowed both him and Janet to grow really big. He found that it was way more effective for fighting most crime, so he just started growing big all the time instead of shrinking down. The problem is, is that whenever he grew past 12 feet tall, he would get proportionately weaker the taller he got, just because his body couldn't support all the weight. It's the same deal when he shrinks down, like he gets proportionately stronger, just like they say in the movie trailer, you know, you're like a bullet when you're small. Really, that was just a tool for Stan Lee to keep the character from getting too overpowered. So a couple years after that, in Avengers number 28, he took the name Goliath. He got a new costume, and they changed the way his growing powers worked. Because of prolonged exposure to the Pym Particles, both Hank and Janet were able to will themselves to grow, but Hank could only grow to 25 feet tall for periods of 15 minutes at a time. The funny thing is, is they had this incident with the Collector, this guy here from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, whereby Hank derped, stayed 25 feet tall for too long, and couldn't shrink down. The Collector, after the Avengers defeated the Collector, the Collector helped fix him, which I think is kind of funny. We just got done beating the crap out of you, so why don't you help me fix myself? So a couple years after that, in Avengers number 59, after the creation of Ultron, he took the name Yellow Jacket. This is like the beginning of Crazy Hank Pym. Hank Pym's always been kind of a crazy character, like a crazier, nuttier version of Tony Stark. Eventually, he creates Ultron. Ultron goes on to become one of the Avengers' biggest villains. Pym gets in a lab accident, spilling a whole bunch of chemicals on himself, develops severe schizophrenia, and an alternate personality takes over his mind. This personality took the name Yellow Jacket, kidnapped Janet Van Dyne, proposed marriage, but because Janet knew that it was really Hank, she just played along, and they ended up getting married in this big ceremony at the Avengers Mansion. 
party got crashed by a bunch of villains, and, and during the battle, Hank Pym's real personality reemerged. Because who cares if comics don't make a lot of sense? Hank and Janet, after the fact, just decided to let the marriage stand, just to roll with it, because they were both in love. They were like, okay, why don't we just stay married, even though it was my alternate personality that married you in the first place. Yay for crazy Stan Lee stories. So because Hank Pym had spent so many years growing large, like he'd suffered so much physical trauma from the effects of growing big, he decided to stop doing it and just continue to be Yellow Jacket. A couple years after that, he became Ant-Man again for a brief period, then devoted himself to research and passed the mantle to the Scott Lang character. That happened during Avengers 181 in March of 1979, but Scott Lang didn't debut as Ant-Man in the comics till that next month in April in Marvel premiere number 47. That was the passing of the torch in the comics. The movie is going to do the exact same thing, you know, in a slightly different way. In the context of the movie, Hank Pym is an old man who's built a really successful company, developed the Pym Particle technology, but his partner, Darren Cross, the villain of the movie, wants to turn it into a weapon. He's kind of like the Obadiah Stane character from the first Iron Man movie. Tony Stark is like, I don't want to sell weapons anymore. Obadiah Stane's like, yes, we're going to keep selling weapons. It makes us a lot of money. So if you see a lot of similarities in the Ant-Man movie to the narrative of the Iron Man movie, of the first Iron Man movie, don't be surprised. I know a lot of you are bummed that we're not going to see Hank Pym as the Ant-Man in the movie, but supposedly like, there's a rumor that he will appear in flashbacks in the Ant-Man costume. Even though Hank Pym was Yellow Jacket in the comics, Darren Cross is going to be Yellow Jacket in the movie. So they're just using Yellow Jacket as an outright villain in the movie. What I'm hoping is, is that Hope Van Dyne, Evangeline Lilly's character, somehow becomes the Wasp using the Yellow Jacket suit. The idea is, is that if the movie isn't going to do Janet Van Dyne, they can still do the Wasp, but it'll be Evangeline Lilly. She's one of those actresses that can do drama, but she can also do action. Like if, if you saw her as Tariel in the Hobbit trilogy. That just feels like a really easy move for Marvel to make if they're trying to develop stronger female characters in the movies. But if we were to see a Hope Van Dyne Wasp character, she might not show up till Avengers Infinity War. So here's my big question for you, you know, which version of the Hank Pym character is your favorite? Like Yellow Jacket, Ant-Man, Giant Man, Goliath, and do you want to see Evangeline Lilly become the Wasp character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? That's actually a good idea for my next bonus video. Maybe I'll do a Janet Van Dyne, Wasp, Hope Van Dyne video, just because her character gets tied up with the creation of Ultron, Jocasta, a lot of other big, big crazy comic book events. Be sure to subscribe to get that. Don't be surprised if Marvel puts a lot of like the Janet Van Dyne comic book character traits onto the Hope Van Dyne character in the movies. Just in case you guys haven't seen it in a while, you can click here for the extended Ant-Man trailer and you can click here for my top five craziest Scarlet Witch and Vision stories in the comics. They're going to be in Captain America Civil War, so I, I think Marvel's going to have some fun with that. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.